everyone, Lord Ajon here, another StarCraft II replay, Legacy of the Void. It's been a while since I last cast one of these. I just wasn't really in the mood for casting StarCraft II at the time, but now I'm back into it with a new release of Legacy of the Void. So on the left side, as the blue Zerg, we have Morgoth. So on the right side, we have, I think he may be sponsored by Red Bull, we have Emo. As Protoss, I should mention, and as Red. Overlord Scout coming straight out. Looks like he's going to head straight for the Protoss base. We'll spot out nice and early. It's actually a quite big map, in fact. It almost looks like it's meant for a free-for-all, at least for a 4v4. Or, not, I mean, not 4v4, 2v2. We can see, and just make a quick browse, there is a... Uh, rich high yield minerals in the center with only six patches though so it does limit how much you can mine at one time and two vesping geysers over here in the regular area we have eight mineral patches so overall you will get income faster with the less amount of scvs but just you'll gather out a little bit faster nothing too too extreme since you can only have so many scvs or probes or drones, whatever, the harvesters at the same time. Drone is coming up to scout up here. I'm not, not exactly sure of the specific spawns on this map, but perhaps it could spawn like here and here, which would be very, very unusual, seeing they'd be expanding out this way and there'd be so much uh, opening areas and lines hit for harassment. Let's see, anything too extreme? Nope. Going for Cypher's Nether's Core, getting the gateway, not choosing to get any early uh, protection with an early Zealot or early... St well, I was going to say early Stalker, but he still needs Cypher's Nether's Core for that. Overlord still b floating over here. Does have actually one more uh, worker than needed. Huh. Six team actually seems really small like isn't it like three per patch did they make it so online plays two f two for patch right now interesting I could have sworn it should be around 24 eight patches three each that should be 24 shouldn't it or did they now change it so it's, you only need it's only recommends you have two on each I must be going insane Unbuildable rocks, nothing too unique. And it looks like the replay, of course, is slowing. It's slow due to the fact that it's early in the game. Looks like he went for the Tall Dream skin for the uh, Zealot. Two Zerklings coming in. We do have Mothership Core out. These two Zerklings are here just for the scout. He, let's see, what will we see? Oh, what does he see? He just looks like he uh, waypoint the move the zergling around the base, and he doesn't see much. He doesn't see any uh, sneaky tech just yet. Perhaps maybe the scout was a little bit too early. He does see that sentry there, so he could expect uh, force fields to pop up in case if he, if he applies any early aggression. But other than that, he doesn't. He didn't really see much, but there's not really much. 2C. He pretty much got a full scout off. He might have not seen that pylon, but that's a no biggie. Probably should bring up the production tab so we see what we can see. Metabolic boost is coming out. The Zergling speed. And of course we got warp gates. It's pretty much standard issue. Nothing too crazy at the beginning. It looks like it's a pretty standard game. Zerg is on two uh, hives. Looks like the second uh, expansion is going up now for the Protoss. Looks like there are f three Zerglings. Overlord's there. We got another Zergling. No, that's another Overlord. Three Zerglings. Is he missing? Did he lose one somewhere? Or... Interesting. He is pulling up a couple pylons. Probably going to set up a couple cannons just to keep some additional protection. These three Zerglings will see a, pr a probe kill. Very nice. He probably should just run away from the Mothership Core. There's nothing more he can do. Any damage he deals to it, just absorb by the shield and be regenerated. Nothing 
too uh, in crazy. Let's see. I'm always curious. Since the Legacy of Void release, I'm assuming there's going to be more features from like at least campaign. Apparently, the in a campaign there is a the sentries can uh, act like medics for shields, but apparently in multiplayer it's still not in the game. I'm just mentioning comparing the campaign to the game. Because I would imagine they both all sides would get a little bit handy new things to use a multiplayer. We'll just see. Have to, and I haven't exactly played any multiplayer for Legacy of the Void yet. Looks like we are seeing some speed. Uh, what's it called? The uh, speedlings, if I remember the fun name you give them, because they got the wings. Haha. <laughs> Too bad Red Bull didn't have wings. Ha ha ha. Yeah, that's enough with a joke like that. The Zerg player is having a little bit of a stockpile. Does have for Hive. Do we see any roaches or hydralisks yet? We are seeing a, ooh, a bit of a wall off, in fact. Which can be a bit dangerous for a Zerg player, because these he only needs one of these buildings, and if he loses one of these buildings, it tends to be a bit bad. He is getting two evolution chambers, though. He looks like he's probably going to upgrade the armor and his choice of melee or ranged. Is he researching just, researching just something just yet? No, he is not. Of course, I could just look up here. Bunch of pylons looking at, overlooking each section. Of course, he can always warp down here. Overlord here. Zergling scouting. And just nothing too crazy. We've got the Zerber out, seeing what there is to see. There are two robotics facilities. Oh, look. Disruptor. I'm trying to think that what that is. I. That's not the Oracle. I'm trying to think what it is. I think this may be a new ability, but I'm not exactly sure. It can create a uh, purification nova which deal heavy damage. Interesting. I don't recognize this one. I'm thinking that's new from Legacy of the Void, so let's see if there's any of those. We are seeing some mortars out getting some heavy, uh, some heavy assault uh, units. We do have a robotics base, so maybe we'll see some colossi. We may see some of the uh, dis warp, di warp and distru disruptors. It just says warp, and I thought that was part of the name at first. Man, I'm way out of it. Thermal lance, grab atomic beans, increase movement speed of. Yeah, just nothing too crazy. Just two movement speeds in a lance. Nothing unique. Nothing new. It's been a while since the last cast StarCraft II. Or actually, really play. It's been a while since I last played online for StarCraft 2, anyways. Going for a Twilight Council now. Yep, I just have to make sure I got the name right. Okay, I hate being one of those people who gets the name wrong in every single thing. And both sides just sitting back ecoing. Nothing too aggressive for uh, harassment. We may see a uh, see a hydralisk then, but do we see any mutilus for harassment? Any nidus worms for surprise attacks? Nothing just yet. Zerg player it does have quite a bit of stock resources. I'm not really sure the rank of these players, so it could just be a bit of slow game. I probably should just uh, fast forward. I'm going to look, um, keep my eye on the mini-map just to see what there is. You can look at, uh, here we go. A couple of those uh, disruptors are coming out. I should probably just put the pace at faster. I think that's actually the actual game pace. No wonder the game seems like it's moving so slow. Here we go, we've got disruptors. I actually 
don't recognize this unit at all. So apparently I think this is a new freshly added game. She's a ball injury that lasts for two seconds and made a powerful Nova dealing that much uh, splash damage and additional damage to shields. We are seeing an attack here. Uh, looks like we've got some roaches, we've got some lurkers, and we got some hydralisks. Here we go. Yeah, I do not remember that unit whatsoever. They look like they were pretty effective as uh, it does uh, what, 145 damage? So I believe that actually can one shot roaches and definitely hydralisks. Do we see any more uh, launches? He does have one available. Go and see it. He is walled in, so it's a good time to sp splash on the guys that are trapped in. Here comes a shot. Yeah, it does one shot roaches just right. The armor does not apply to that splash damage. They do have a bit of health 100, 100. Well, 100 shield, 100. Go and see another explosion? Nope. It looks like it explodes at the end of the thing, doesn't deal damage when passing through. So overall, these are pretty good uh, defensive unit. A bit of a bad micro for by the Zerg player. I think this is a new unit for Legacy of the Void, because I do not remember seeing them from Heart of the Swarm. So, they do a lot of damage to the standard tier 1, tier tier 2 army of the Zerg. In fact, quite a bit. These are a tier 3 unit because they require the uh, robotics facility. The Zerg player is on 2 uh, no, three, on 3 base while on the Protoss player is still on 2. What's the cost of those units? 150, 150. So they're a gas heavy unit. And a bit expensive. About the same cost as a Ghost, I want to say? I know Dark Templar is 125 and a high 20, 125. So there are specialist uh, unit. Oh, for some odd reason I thought they had energy. That's just the uh, sentry. Queen's on the on the ground, so they cannot do much. Lurker tried to go in for... The, oh, but the splash damage can still hit the burrowed units. Looks like they also, I know they changed that in the campaign, it looks like they also changed it in the uh, in multiplayer. Instead of uh, making the max damage uh, 10 per hit on the shields, now it's a, a barrier that absorbs 200, 200 additional damage. So it basically almost doubles their durability, it more than doubles their shields, but it's equivalent to their health also. So from 300 to 500 so greatly makes them makes them very durable no tech off just yet we do see a couple observers being built just to probably see the creep tumors so we can remove them purge the land of the xenos even the pretty much a lot of warp gates he sort of walled sort of walling to prevent the Units from going towards the harvesters. Very nice. Huh. Apparently, there's also a new sound effect for the warp in. I didn't realize that till now. Now they make a. And so it's. Sound. Zergling's coming in to see this expansion. Perhaps you can get some kills. Like. It's not very well defended right now, and warping in will take some time. Very nice, he's getting a lot of probes. Calling back the entire army. These Zerglings have the paid for themselves, destroying, not only delaying, killing a lot of probes, but delaying the mining time. Going for a fourth hatchery, very nice. Go ahead and speed it up. We are seeing a bit of a force up top. I think that's uh, Zerglings. Yep, Zerglings.
And looks like he's going to send out attack. Is there any Zerbers? Yeah, there are some Zerbers, so these creep tumors will be cleared, cleaned up. Lurkers are deploying early so they can get their damage. He's spreading them out to prevent them from being splashed down by these uh, disruptors. And you can see now they're getting some nice splash damage. Knocking out a lot of shields. They are being sought, seen by the observers. The Hydrolus should maybe focus on the observers. Because they are revealed. Just to make sure that his lurkers are stay hidden. The lurkers are doing quite a bit of damage with their AoE. Lurkers are very good versus the balls. The balling up Protoss. Since it's a line of splash damage. Basically. A line, line based splash damage. These Hydrolus should be able to wipe out this last uh, Immortal. Nope, they once they got off the creek, they couldn't really pursue. What is both sides? Looks like going for tunning claws. We may see some tunning roaches. Aspire is coming out, so we may see some harassing mutilus, or you could turn the great aspire for some brood lords for heavy siege. <clears throat> and looks like another attack by the Protoss player. The Protoss player is being a bit more aggressive than the Zerg player at this point. They are s the Zerg player is additionally going going for additional hatchery. There's this uh, base trying to be set up. Zerglings are nope, they will not spot it. Well, this uh, Overlord maybe will see it. He sees the probe. He could reference him that that there is a base, perhaps there. Clean up this overlord, so he knows there's a force there. And sending a small force like this will just be crushed. You have to be careful. Using the lurkers very defensively. Perhaps he may. Uh, he needs to get some more aggressive units. I guess that's what the spire is meant for. He should be building mutilisk soon, though he doesn't have much gas and. Mutilus are very gas heavy. Oh, do you have some uh, Zerglings here? We are going to see some probe deaths, though they're not really they're not really staying in one location for too long. He could go and kill. It's probably won't get. He won't get the Nexus. He should have focused on one of these warping in structures. I would say. But there goes those Zerglings. There is a small force here, but overall I would say this force is much stronger. Hydralis can provide a lot of DPS. There's a 2-2 upgrade. I should, probably should mention upgrades. We got a 0-0-2 attack versus a 2-2 two two for the... Uh, oh wait, there is two shields. And versus the 2 and two for the Zerg player. The Hydralisks do have quite a bit of DPS to them, but more than a Stalker. Well, a Stalker is much more durable, ha having 80 80 versus just the 80 of the Hydralisk. Immortals will be very strong, though, at least a couple of them that are there, will be very strong versus the Roaches, which is the main tanky force of this army. They do have an armor of four, so they can withstand a high rate of fire units quite easily. Oh, we are. What the heck is that? I haven't seen that unit before. A Ravager launches a missile that to, at a target location, dealing 60 damage to all units upon air impact. Cooldown 7 seconds. So it's going to be light artillery, I believe, is the best way to describe it. I don't remember seeing this unit before. I think it's new to Legacy of Void. Reducing some fibers up here. What? Will they use any of their abilities? They do have that, uh pool that they would lay by down, but after they ran out of energy, he should just retreat them because he just lost them for pretty much no reason there. Now he's chasing back the army. More soccer reinforcement is a good idea. Soccer's are very effective as roaches due to the fact that they have also increased damage to the armor. A lot of them weren't firing at first, but now they're all firing. The backline units are also firing. Lurkers are trying to set up. 
Dimes going full back, let them walk into the Lurker line. Lurkers have actually quite a bit of range. I thought it was just a little bit shorter, but they have a really good range. And one of them is sieging the Nexus, or no, just sieging the Pylon, not even getting the Nexus. I would say he should try Force Fire on the ground to hit these units up here, but I don't think you can Force Fire the ground in this game. <laughs> Oh, nice lineup. He's getting a very good lineup when they're trying when they're lining up the stairs right there. Something to note that perhaps if you're engaging on the stairs, you should maybe put a lurker up here, like to slice them the sideways. These uh Ravagers do have a uh, their own regular attack. Apparently, three three is done. I just realized, and I'm now seeing the Ultralisk being built. So apparently they do have Blight Artillery ability, and they do have their standard uh, attack, which is the same little bit, I think that's the same range as the Stalker, if I remember correctly. So they can have their standard range. Oh, we do have Stalkers over here. Looks like Red Bull is uh, calling the GG, because he lost Nexus, he hasn't, and the Zerg just expanded way too much out. Just curious, which building builds those Ravengers? Is it the Infestation Pit? Uh, where's a larva? There's a larva. Ravager. Wait. Where do you build a Ravager? Can morph into a Lurker. Can morph into a uh, Roach. Interesting. I'm just sort of discovering this new unit. To morph into ranged artillery, of course they call it artillery, causes uh, quite a bit of gas, so it's an alternate alternative for the roach. This is interesting. I'm not exactly sure what building is needed to build it. Perhaps there's a specific building for it, or no. That's the Lurker Den. Which you can morph from the Hydrolisk Den to the Lurker Den. Perhaps maybe the Evolution Chamber? I'm not exactly sure. Oh well, I'll try to figure it out. Because that's the first time I've ever seen that unit. This is Lord Ajon saying thank you for watching and signing off.